Excuse me to please. Hello and welcome to Filmy Ladies. Um, we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the cinematic excellence and brilliance that is doom, 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 doom. Um, we have not been able to forget this great experience at the theaters and we hope that you have not either. In case you have, I would like to remind you, it has been 20 years since Uday Chopra reprised his role that he had in Mohabate of showing us his six pack and taking a shirt off at every available opportunity opportunity and showing us his oily chest. He has done the same in Doom. He has also done the same in Doom 2, which is great and excellent. Um, also, I would like to say in a clear case of Hollywood copying Bollywood, so many years before Ryan Gosling announced that his job was beach, Mona Lee Bose in Doom 2's job was beach in Rio de Janeiro. Um, also, Doom is a very important movie because it explains to us the importance of road safety in important, busy, crowded metropolises like Mumbai, how we should drive our motorcycles and also how as pedestrians we should be aware of road safety. That's very important. Um, it also talks about the importance of having very beautiful police officers such as Shonadi Bose who don't actually do any police work. Um, there is also John Abraham who acts very well by removing his helmet. Um, this, these are very good movies, you guys. Um, so Beth, how much of a celebratory mood are you in for Doom, Doom, Doom? It's doom. really quite surprising all the things that are turning, turning 20 this year. Um, and I, this is not a movie I ever think about. The second one I think what? about a little bit more. The third one I also think about moderately more because it was set in Chicago, which is the closest big, the, the American big city that I have the most familiarity with. So that's kind of fun. But um, yeah, I don't, um, sure, I'll celebrate Doom. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm happy for other people to celebrate it. Maybe is a better way to say it. This is just not a movie for me <laughs> or a franchise for me. And that is okay. Are you immune to the charms of Abhishek Bachchan and well, Uday Chopra and John Abraham? So I said this to Pitu about the second one, but I think it holds for the first. Nobody in this movie is more annoying anywhere else than they are in this movie, except Uday Chopra, who is perhaps at his best in this movie or these movies, which is confusing. And I, you know, after the Romantics came out last year, I remember people talking about you know, if only he had found the sort of Ali sidekicky role earlier and like had been satisfied with that. And that this is the first time I've rewatched those movies since then. And I was like, yeah, you know what? He he's not bad. He gets the job done. He looks like he's having fun. Yeah. Um, you know, I really enjoyed his dance with uh, Isha Deal in the rain. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that was and mostly it's him dancing. She just kind of does this a few times. Yeah. You know, uh, I really thought he was good at that. So yeah. I consider myself somewhat more schooled. Um, now, I'm not wishing for a comeback of Uday Chopra. Nobody, most most people are not wishing for that. But this really is a nice addition to him for a career that didn't go the way he wanted it to. Mm -hmm. um, I love Abhishek Bachchan. I hate him in these movies. Partly it's the writing but and probably the directing, but like he's so irritating. He's so grumpy. <laughs> He just does not sell super cop in any way, in mm. any way. Um, and we can get, we'll focus on do one mainly, I, I suppose, with sprinkles with the, with part two as well. But yeah, but nobody, nobody comes off well in these movies except Uday Chopra. And that's yeah. a thing I just said on a recording. So I know when I, unprecedented um... times. <laughs> <laughs> The apocalypse is coming. Um, yeah, when I saw Doom, which was ages and ages and ages ago, and it's not a movie I revisit, um, I rewatched it in preparation for this episode. And I was like, there were so many revelations I had. Like, first of all, I was like, wow, Dej Chopra is actually very funny and very good yeah. as Ali Akbar Fateh Khan, whatever his name is. Yeah. He's goofy and he's silly and he's funny. He's having fun. He reminded me a little bit of Sarkit from the Munabhai movies, like mm -hmm. Ashad Marsi. Like he had mm -hmm. that same Guval energy. Mm -hmm. He was just kind of like, cute and endearing, I thought. And then Abhishek Bachchan was just annoying because he's so insufferable <laughs> in both the films, in Doom as well as in and Doom he's not. He's not entertaining in the songs. I know no one thinks of him as a dancer, really, but I find his song presence usually kind of entertaining. Not really here. Like He's not uh, even trying. He's not even trying. Uh, and it's especially bad because, like, in Doom, 
Uday Chopra is obviously not like a great dancer or anything by any stretch of the imagination, but you can tell he's having fun in the songs and Abhishek Bachchan isn't even trying. And mm. then in Doom 2, you have Hrithik Roshan and Ashwara Rai who are phenomenal dancers and no one can co hold a candle to them, but even there he's not trying. And then there's Bipasha in Doom 2 who is also phenomenal in her songs. And so he's just kind of like there. And what he, a waste. Such a waste. <sighs> and he does not come across as like a super cop. He has these like action-y sequences. Like I forget if it's Doom 1 or Doom 2. I think it might be Doom 1 in which he has this jet ski and he like comes to save Uday Chopra from the bad guys by like you know, driving his jet ski out of the water. And I was That's like, his that entry is not believable. In, in the second one. It's so funny. It's like he's it's an orca so at bad. SeaWorld. It's so dumb. No. He it's literally, so his persona in this movie is like a dude who just falls asleep watching television with a beer bottle in his hand. So I was like, I don't buy the jet ski. Um, and he scowls. And then, his super cop power is just scowling all the time. Yeah. You actually don't see him doing any police work even in either Not of the really. films. Yeah. Not and much. then Remy Sane was very annoying in the first one. She's basically just bickering all the time. And I then in Doom 2, she's pregnant and just eating all the and time. And I was just kind of like, why are you here? Isha Deol. Boy, oh boy, she's bad. so bad. I had forgotten oh that boy. crop of Nepos. Oh, boy. She's because terrible. Now we talk about Nepos a lot, but I completely had forgotten that there was that whole batch of Nepos that had Isha Deol in it. I love that when you were watching Doom, by the way, you WhatsApped me and you were like, Isha Deol is billed as just Isha in this movie. Because, you know, she's in the leagues of like Cher and Madhubala and Nargis and Nutan, and therefore she only deserves the mononym. And I was like, you are bad. Um, really bad. She also just scowls a lot, and I wasn't sure why she was in such a bad mood throughout. She was just very grumpy. I mean, her character is is nothing. No. But and maybe so. This is a question: Did the director tell the scowly people to be scowly? I think so. Or did the actors choose it? And I would like to be generous to at least to Abhishek, who I do think is a good actor in certain things. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know why scowl was such a a. a Artistic I note. think their job was just scowl. They were like, you just have to scowl. Because I've seen Abhishek be scowly, grumpy, but also act well. For example, Yuva comes to mind, where he was definitely scowling throughout the movie, but he was also actually like mm -hmm. portraying a character. Mm -hmm. And this one, he just has no character. I couldn't tell you anything about his character, no. nor can I tell you anything about Isha, except that she has very bad fashion choices. There was one it's dress a rough in particular. Time. It's, a it's a terrible rough time. time. But there was this one outfit in particular that stood out that was like this brown leather thing that was very me, Tarzan, you, Jane. Yeah. Um, and it had this weird asymmetrical hem that looked like it had been cut with craft scissors. <laughs> and there was this brown top she wore. And she wore it unironically. Like, it wasn't even like she was making some sort of point. Like, maybe she was auditioning for an episode of Project, like a season of Project Runway. She was just wearing it because that's what she does in this movie. Also... For the daughter of Hema Malini to perform so badly in the songs was shocking to me. Like, I know we shouldn't compare her to her parents, Hema and Dharam, because they're just in a completely different league. But that song, Dhumma Chale, that is picturized on her, she's so stiff. And I was like, aren't you supposed to be some sort of like ODC trained dancer I like your she, mom? Yeah, which does not mean she can do this. I understand right. that. But it was shocking because I actually paused and I was like, I thought she was a... You know, I thought she had dance training. Um, you know, I study voice. That doesn't mean I know how to play the saxophone, right? So, like, I, right. I get it. But but oh, I really did expect her to be better than this. Because also, it didn't seem to me that her choreography was particularly intricate or anything. But she was not even selling the gentle arm flings and things like that. That no. I just... She did this a lot. <laughs> Which I was like, anyone can do that. Like, what are you doing? It's throwing like sub bubbles at people. What? Are, like, what is this? She she did this a lot, and I was like, if you can't even do that, then I don't she know was, why you're bothering. She was her ahead way. of her time working on Salt Bay, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just the wrong way. She needed to go down, out. <laughs> she was scowl Bay so, in this movie. So much scowling. And then John Abraham actually I thought came off well because he was yeah. like monotonous and completely blank as usual. He's so bad. <laughs> 
I mean, to compare that with, you know, what we've seen in Patan is just, it's yeah. really, it was a good reminder of how people can improve and some people yes. do. Um, so that was, uh, oh, yeah, I, I mean, this is reminding me of a time when I really thought he was just dreadful. Uh, and I, yeah. I still maintain that opinion about this <laughs> film, but again, you know, if he's supposed to be sort of giving a, a rivalry to Abhishek, then like, there's, there's just nothing playing off nothing. So it's nothing, you know, like I didn't know, I know that they're doing sort of different vibes of nothing, but it was not interesting. <laughs> no. Um, I did enjoy Doom too, though, because like, okay, so Doom is kind of like, eh, but then I really wanted to rewatch Doom too, just because I love Hrithik Roshan and Shwara Rai so much. And I remember watching Doom too in the theater when it released and I, I remember enjoying yeah. it. And I was like, okay, I'll rewatch it again because I need a palate cleanser after the rubbish that is Doom. And wow, How'd they're that go both for you? very annoying <laughs> in it. <laughs> And look, we, uh, I had forgotten about her speaking about herself in first, third person and stuff, but even that aside, like, well, her dialogues are so bad. So Beth. dumb. So dumb. Are you like checking me out? I was like, oh my God, why would you do that to Ishwara Rai? Like, did the writers just absolutely despise her? But I mean, okay, I'm going to sound like such an Ishwara apologist here, which everyone knows I'm a big fan, so it's fine. But I don't understand how anyone is supposed to give a good performance when that is their character and those are the dialogues they have. Like anyone is going to screw that up. I think, so I, I, I agree that the character is a challenge and probably not an interesting meaty challenge. Although maybe no. some people could, could have found like, you know, so like, honestly, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but like Kangana, you know, someone with... Because Aww. Ashwarya can bring feisty fire, yeah, you know, and sparkle and all that, but she was not here. And I feel like no. you, you could have in this role if encouraged or if you had that idea and the director let you run with it. But she really was um, super irritating yet also kind of flat. Like it's a weird, it's a weird combo. But it, she it was, was not, just it was kind an of uphill bratty. challenge for sure. So bratty. She was bratty, and, but there was nothing endearing and sassy and funny about her. Yeah. And I think the whole, I'm sure many movies do this, like, okay, the cops are going to send in someone to be their informant mm. and they're not particularly qualified probably, right. but then watching her whole emotion, I mean, spoilers for two movies, you guys, <laughs> you know, watching her whole love story with Rithik, you're just like this. I mean, she, she, speaking of children, right. She's acting like a kind of a, a besotted teenager and it's possible you could do something interesting with that. Like, does she, has she had a childhood that didn't really enable her to let her be a child? Does she, you know, not have any structure or love? Uh, and this is the first taste of it she's gotten. That's kind of what I was assigning to this character, but she really, ugh, I don't know. She this was a the love heart emoji every time she saw Redek. But also to your point about childhood, we don't know anything about these people. No. We no. don't know about her. And then we also don't know about Hrithik Roshan. Unless I'm missing something, are they both supposed to be like orphans or something? Do they have families? I don't I think don't any know. mention was made of any of that. All we know about Hrithik Roshan is that his name is Aryan and he puts A every time he's doing some sort of like chori. And I was like, how convenient that these two super chores are super gorgeous. Like I was not aware yeah. that that is like a business I mean, to that's, get into. That's that's fine. That's a thing. You know, yeah. Ocean's Eleven is full of beauty and right. twelve and thirteen and eight or nine or whatever the other ones are are full of all the oceans. People. Yeah, all the oceans. Like that. That's not a problem. But it is. I just. Uh, I don't know. I enjoyed the dis Rithik's disguises, even though they're kind of yes. silly. Like I, I, you know, and as a museum person, I enjoy all that. There's two major museum-y things happening here, plus like the third at the fort or whatever that is. Yeah. So I'm all, I'm all for that. Like stealing antiquities is very, very entertaining. Um, I meant to look up what he was saying about those coins. I, was he saying that the coins were, were they Indian, but they were in Brazil? I don't know. I miss it was that supposed point. to be Brazilian. I don't know. It doesn't matter. All very interesting. <laughs> um, kind of silly. Like their their disguises are silly and fun. The little black machine that runs along the black marble lines in between the feet of the guards. I, I enjoy all that. Um, my museum is full of white plaster plasters of Greek and Roman statues. So I'm like, oh, there's Rithik. Oh, he's hiding. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Uh, uh, but I mean, yeah, it's really. 
if it was just Riffick doing heists and almost yeah. nothing else, that would have been better because he, and, and I take it back. He's not the most annoying in this. He's the most annoying in main prime Kitty Bonnie Hoon, obviously, obviously. So but bad. he is pretty irritating in this too, I would say. But when he's doing the heists, he's less irritating and it's more sort of physical and less talking. Yeah, because he's quiet. <laughs> yeah, he was not bringing the dialogue delivery in this one, I thought. Um, but Two is less annoying than one to me, with yeah. the exception of Suneri, who is so overdone and so. Here's my name. Do you get it? Here's my name. Do you get it? Do you get it? Here's she's my name. also so bathed Here's her in name. bronzer. Her <laughs> yeah. And she says like a lot. And I was yeah. trying to remember if there's any other movie I've seen where someone refers to them in the third person as much as she does. I don't think I. I just could not think of any. She was just so awful in it. Um, but I really enjoyed their chemistry. And I would rather watch um, Ritik and Ashara together in Doom 2 than Jodha Akbar, which is just a lumbering slumber fest oh. that I do not like at all. Hard disagree. Um, I like the historical trap. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't like them in Jodha Akbar at all. It's so boring, that movie. Just it's, doesn't it's end. not a great movie, but I it is, yeah. pre- it is pretty in a way that I really like. So I would yeah. take that. This but is I not don't pretty. enjoy the prettiness of like the the periodical outfit like the period outfits um i vastly preferred their fashions at this like ishara's boots were everything <laughs> i loved her outfits i loved her little short shorts um i loved her curls i i kind of enjoyed the way that she was styled in this way because you never get to see ishwara in that avatar mm-hmm. we're so used to seeing ishwara she has a very indian beauty and so we're always used to seeing her just draped in yards and yards and yards of fabric mm-hmm. and wearing like heavy Indian jewelry and like a big bindi and everything. And especially in her later parts of her career, that's all we've seen her do. Like in Pony and Selva and she's in all these like, so it's so nice to see a more westernized Ishwara, sure. um, which she used to play during her younger years. Like I love the way she styled in Josh, for instance. It's mm-hmm. so carefree and light and sweet. Yeah. But except for Doom 2, I can't really think of a movie where she was just out and out sexy. Um, but I like that word you used carefree about Josh. There's nothing carefree yeah. about this, about no. her in this. She's like This is just very artificial. Her, like, very artificial. Um, yeah. And, and the and first very one... Fake. You know, the first one, obviously, someone has seen and loved Christina Aguilera's dirty era. Yes. <laughs> this one, this one is less early 2000s horrible. It's also two years later. But the so I, the fashions in this are, you know, of a time, but they didn't bother me the way that like, yeah. I didn't think anyone looked stupid beyond what a lot of videos and things looked like at yeah. that time. Right. But the first one is just kind of. But yeah, the first and maybe I'm just terrible. being too hard on it. I don't know. But there's two outfits in particular that Ashwara has worn in this movie that I love. So there's that song she has, Crazy Kiare, which my mother was obsessed with for a while. So my mother gets obsessed with very strange songs. <laughs> I don't understand her taste. She mm. used to love Crazy Kiare when she, when it came out. And anytime it would play on the uh, on the TV or if she heard it somewhere, she would like immediately start humming. Um, and Ashwara's outfit in that where she has the high ponytail and she's wearing like the black leather and the boots and she's wearing the golden top. I love that outfit. Mm-hmm. And then there's that black sort of like um, dominatrix outfit she has going on. I love that one also. And then I also like her white outfit in the Dhoom Machale song that kind of has like almost like tattered on the bottom, like the unfinished hems on the bottom and the shorts and the and the curly hair. I, li- I like that one as well. So I like her yeah. outfits in these songs. And it is such a treat and a joy to watch Hrithik Roshan dance in the Dhumma Chale oh, song. Oh, it's amazing. His yeah. body is liquid. Yeah. He has no bones, I'm sure. So of this. enjoyable. So, so enjoyable. enjoyable. Yeah. And his close ups and his expressions. Like, I don't think Hindi cinema has seen a better male dancer than Brithik Roshan, like Barnan. Mm. And I know Ishwar is a wonderful dancer and she's great. But when she's dancing with him in Dumashale, as much as that's very entertaining for me as a fan of both of these people, I can't look away from Brithik. Yeah, he's really, really great. He's so good that you you almost feel like Ishwara is struggling to keep up with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, she's good in that. So my mom loves Crazy Kriare. And then she likes this really annoying song called Just Chill. Do you know that song, Katrina's song? I do. I don't remember what movie it's from. I, but years it's that ago. It's something. Years it's a ago, movie. 
I was in London with a friend and we were eating dinner at an Indian restaurant and they mm -hmm. had a, this was back in DVD days. They had a song mm -hmm. DVD playing and they gave it to me. I don't, that was very nice of them to give me this. And of course you can't play a UK, a UK DVD in the U S on a U.S. player, but you know, it was still very nice. Um, but just chill was on that. And my friend who I was traveling with has watched a few like songs with me, but does not watch Indian cinemas and in Indian cinema. But she was like, she, for years, she would go around going, just chill, chill, just chill. Yeah. <laughs> so that song holds a special place in my heart, even though I don't actually like it. <laughs> no, my mom unironically likes these two songs. Like she loves Just Chill and she loves Crazy Kiare. And it's one fun. time I remember asking, I was like, why are you so obsessed with these songs? Like they're not even that good. And she was like, what do you mean they're not good? They're very good. I was like, okay, I'm not going to argue okay. with you. <laughs> There's no but, accounting um, for taste. <laughs> there is no accounting for taste. Okay. Can we talk about the two Bipashas in this movie who are so adorable? I mean, Shonali, the cop is like, okay, but I love Monali, whose job is beach. And her job is beach. Her job is beach. And all she does is wear colorful bikinis and a lot of necklaces. I had forgotten about all of that um, until I saw, you know, cop Bipasha in the hospital. I was like, oh, yeah, they ice her out and she doesn't get to continue. Because I, I like her. You know, I like the Pasha Basu. I know a lot of people I don't, Bipasha. but I, I, I like her. I don't see what the problem is. So there are people who don't like her. Why? Yeah, I don't know. I take oh. back my annoying comment about her, too. She's probably been more annoying in some other things than she is in this. Oh. Although Monali is pretty annoying. But um, I love Monali. <laughs> I mean, she's she's fun. She's cute. She's a good foil for our partner with Ali. You know, it's it's fine. She's a little bit. So it seemed to me that she was very inconsistently able to understand Hindi. But then does yes. she say something like, I can understand Ali, but I can't understand Jay? She does. So, okay. So then that that added up. I was like, are my subtitles being weird? Or is this this a thing for some reason? But like, you know, it's when I hope they're very the happy. Jeep or whatever with them. She's sitting in the yeah. back. Yeah. And Ali says something and she understands. And then she yeah. says to him, she's like, I don't understand what he says. <laughs> um but it was really cute. I loved Ali's terrible English that he keeps talking with her because she doesn't understand anything except English. Um, that was funny. And then I loved Eng uh, Ali's English in, in both the movies. Like, um, I not talk to you, not talk I. I thought that was great. <laughs> that is that is great dialogue writing. I loved it. And for a while there, I was definitely saying things like, I not talk to you, I not talk I. Um I would like to share my favorite piece of dialogue as portrayed by the subtitles, which is from the very end of Doom 2 when Rithik has gone over the cliff and Jay says to Suneri, Suneri. Suneri uh, get lost, Suneri, your life is your punishment. I was like, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna start saying that to people. Get lost, your punishment your, is your life. <laughs> That's Love cold. It. It's very cold. <laughs> Very cold. I and love then it. there's the dialogue uh, in that same scene where Abhishek Bachchan says to her, he's kind of like, why did you shoot or whatever? Why did you kill Rithik if he's like the love of your life? And Ashwarya has done such terrible acting in that scene where she goes, I killed him because I love him. Yeah. And we're supposed to feel bad. And I was just kind of like, eh, okay, you're not really selling it, but fine. Um, also, no. I never believed at any moment in that movie that Rithik loved her. It, no, was, it just seemed not very one-sided. <laughs> No, he's a master criminal mastermind, whatever, whatever. He's using every who works better alone. Who works better alone? Like man, when a man tells you he is better off alone, believe him. Run away, what is that girl. Movie? It reminded me of that movie title. He's just not that into you. Just not that into you. <laughs> Although maybe he is. I don't know. Bollywood upsetting all common conventions or all yes. you know conventional <laughs> wisdom once again. And also Rithik under communicating in every single scene in this movie. No one in this movie communicates properly. And the thing with the gun when well, he's like does. making her shoot him and everything, like that's so creepy. It's very creepy. So messed up. I do enjoy the Brazil shots though in this movie. It's very pure, it's very pretty. It is I pretty. like the Christ the Redeemer statue and the the beaches look like a lot of fun. Um, and I, I enjoyed the color and everything. So I, I like how polished and fun the room two was. I listened to the song twice and I had a friend who is a native speaker of Spanish watch it with me, who oh. also likes Bollywood. This is my friend who went to Pony and Salvan with me. Ah. Um, I was like, I'm pretty sure that what they're saying in here is Spanish, but they are oh. in Brazil. Right. <laughs> and I know people from Mumbai know about Portuguese because it's right yes. next door in Goa where people in movies right. go all the time. So, yeah. and maybe I'm wrong and I just misheard, but my native speaking 
Spanish native speaker friend was like, yeah, I know. that's from what I can make out that is Spanish. But oh, okay, that was that was weird. Not that you can't have Spanish in Brazil, but I just feel like, why is this not Portuguese? There is no reason <gasps> this is not Portuguese other than that they were right. because the previous one had Spanish in it for also reasons. Um, why does Doom have Spanish in it? Doesn't it have Spanish in some of the songs? Aren't they saying baila, baila and stuff like that at times? Oh, yeah. Not much, right. but a little bit. Yeah. So okay. I'm assuming it's just that, but also like, can you, can you translate it to Portuguese? I know Google Translate probably didn't exist in 2006, but there's Portuguese speakers all over the place in Mumbai, I'm sure, right. <laughs> or very nearby. Call one I up. did. I did like one thing about them too that I have to say, like in the beginning in the credits when they're showing the desert and everything and they literally write somewhere in the Namibian desert. And I was like, good job. Yes, you identified the country because in Patan, yes. when they have that like underground arms market, they're like somewhere in Africa. I'm like, that is a continent. Please tell us the name of a country or a city. Yeah. Uh, but these are the kind of tiny things that you and I nitpick about and nobody else cares about. Oh, and when I but I mean, about every, it, people just look at me like, why? <laughs> I saw a lot of people on Twitter roasting that, that Patan thing. Oh, they but, were? Okay. Yeah. And there's, there was another movie that had pretty famously messed up place names. Now I can't remember it, but, but um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I liked the train heist. I thought that was fun. It's very silly. Mm -hmm. And if you can't make fun of the British royalty, who can you make fun of, honestly? So like, yes. it's great. <laughs> No problem. I actually like Rithik Roshan as Queen Elizabeth. I thought he was very <laughs> fetching. He was very good in his pink cardigan and his pearls. Yeah. And I, I thought that was a very good look on him, actually. He's a lot taller and differently shaped than she is. So He also has an Adam's apple. <laughs> yeah. And, okay, here's the thing with Rithik as doing disguises, right? The thumbs. The thumbs. <laughs> Just look at his hand and you'll know who he is. Right. All you've got is his hands are in sight a lot. Yeah. So, look, I don't think the janitor came out with mittens on, right? So, no. no. Uh, oh, I guess he just has to be in gloves the whole time, bed. actually. I guess just be really gloves. gloves would cover it. Yeah. Or at least on one hand, there's always yeah. a glove or something. Like, I just, you know, um, there's a lot of things about his physicality that would make it hard for him to go undercover yeah he's not exactly nondescript this no, is not rajkumar is, rao or something he's descript <laughs> he is very descript Rick roshan <laughs> colon descript <laughs> what do you think the legacies of the doom franchise are if any oh god and i don't you know i don't gravitate towards vehicular action films so <laughs> I can imagine there is some of that or the fact that, you know, Fast and Furious and, and to some extent Ocean's Eleven and whatever were translated into the Bollywood context. So maybe that, mm -hmm. but but other than this one, I, I don't know enough about any of those to say, okay, what else is there? Right. I don't know if like a production value of chase scenes or whatever was, was really raised. I can imagine it was, but again, this is yeah. not my forte. So I just kind of wonder... I know that like I'm not some giant fan of Doom or Doom 2 or whatever. I haven't even seen Doom 3 because I refuse to watch a movie that has Amir and Katrina in it. Like that is like the worst combination I can think of. Um, <laughs> but I know a lot of people actually really enjoyed the Doom movies then oh, they, yeah. when they came out. Not Doom 3, but Hugely I know Doom popular. 2 especially. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's because that is one um, genre, one subset of Hollywood films that people do enjoy, like the heist movies. Mm -hmm. And then people also like, like the vehicular movies, like you said, like the Fast and the Furious and stuff. And so I think there's always a market in India for people to do stuff like that because you don't get mm -hmm. to see, I mean, at least back then, you didn't get to see all of these like stylish bikes and stuff like that. I mean, now it's more kind of like, eh, whatever. But back then to see all of these stylish like car chases or motorbike chases and these very expensive looking cars and stuff was very much a novelty. Yeah. I mean, now they're like a dime a dozen, but back in like 2000 and stuff, it was still like very cool. And then even like the styling of the films, right? Like those motorcycle jackets and everything. Yeah. It's a very stylish franchise. Does it have a lot of substance? I would say absolutely not, but it's very stylish. And there's definitely like a part of the Indian audience that enjoys that and wants oh, that. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of audiences that want that, I think. So yeah. yeah. And if that, that was satisfying for those reasons, that that's fine. That's a perfectly fine reason to make a movie. In yeah. My opinion. And especially when it's a franchise and it like continues, like it's that same story of like uh, Abhishek Bachchan and Uday Chopra and it's continued into Doom 2. I don't know. Are they also in Doom 3? Yeah. Oh, they are. Okay. Um, I suppose that that would also be fun for people because I mean, I just read that Sefali Khan is gearing up to do race four. I've never seen any of the race oh, movies. Right. So clearly there's 
a sub like there's people out there that are enjoying those um also i feel like doom 2 just had such an amazing star power to it yeah. like it had rithik and ishwara kind of at the top of their game doom also Except remember surprisingly doom not you know they should have been better in this movie than they are oh yeah no, I mean in terms of popularity. Yeah, like yeah, there were yeah, big yeah. Stu- like big superstars, great, right? Great and so it was yeah. yeah, I mean compared to like Isha Deol and stuff. Um <laughs> and then um what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something about um yeah, and then there's Papasha Vasu in it, and I've always liked her. Okay, so I don't understand why people don't like Vipasha Basu. I think she's amazing. I think she's so stunning. Mm-hmm. Like, especially there's that song. I don't remember what the words of the song are, but it starts with her saying, ooh, baby. And she's just like swaying her hips and she's mm-hmm. wearing like a sarong and like a bikini top. And she is just fire. The woman is mm-hmm. fire. You can't look away from her. I love her in her songs from Umkara. I actually really enjoyed her in Jism. So... Mm-hmm. More Bipasha, please. I've always Mm. liked her. And I think she has such a star power. Like, okay, she's not like the greatest actress out there. I get it. No one is watching Bipasha Basu movies because she's she's like... She's fine. I think in what I've seen her in. Yeah, she's not worse than a lot of other people. So No. So way better than Isha Dale. I know. (laughs) Uh, But I've never understood why Bipasha didn't kind of like become a big star. Because I think she has amazing star power. She's better than Katrina, in my opinion. Katrina became a big star. She can't even speak Hindi. Mm -hmm. And Bipasha is great at all of those things. So I think some of it has to do with the fact that she was associated with like Vikram Bhatt's movies too. Or like like Mohit Suri. Like all the jism and stuff like that. And I I think she got like a little bit typecast. Do you think being a couple with John Abraham hurt her in any way? Because he too was not really mm, quite yeah. mega star when they were together. So did they kind of like mutually A minus list themselves somehow? Possibly. I don't know. I don't know either. Um, but I also think that it was like a very yeah, I do think that being part of a hit Jodi does help a lot. Like I've, I've spoken about yeah. how Katrina's rise to stardom is primarily because of her co-stars. And I think if Bipasha had done more movies with the Khans, for instance, mm. um, I think she would have become a much bigger star than she became. Like yeah. I would, I mean, this is going to be a very controversial opinion, but I would rather watch Bipasha Basu in a movie than Deepika. Like oh. to me. Yeah, like I adore Babasha. And huh. Deepika is just kind of like that same blank face in every film. I'm so tired of her. Um, <laughs> but Deepika had like the best debut ever. She got to debut in Om Shanti Om opposite none other than Shah Rukh Khan. I mean, sky's the limit after that, right? Yeah. So I think with the Babasha, it was a little bit of like a timing issue. Not at the right place at the right time. Yeah. And then also like a, like a Jodi issue. Um, but I thought she was adorable as Monali and Shonali. I want to be friends with Monali. I want her to take me to all the beaches and visit. She's so cute. Um, She's cute. And I thought that, you know, as the cop, she did as much copping as Abhishek did. And like she yeah. was right about the location of one of the, the heists and everything. So she's, you know, and I liked her, you know, shooting that target really successfully and everything. Yeah. You know, I know it's macho and kind of, I mean, cops are gross and everything, but like it, in the world of this film, I enjoyed it yeah so i have not seen doom 3 and i don't intend to can you tell me a little bit about it all i know is i'm a magician in it yeah so he plays twins and it's very much sim- apparently similar to what is that movie about the magician twins that um there's a movie there about were magician two twins. magician movies that came out sort of at the same at the same time um, I meant to look this up before we started. I am so sorry. They are called everyone's screaming at their <laughs> screaming at their um computers as I don't remember the are name. Are they of this movie. American or yes, Indian? Yes, American movies. Um oh. maybe I'm totally wrong. I thought he was in one of the The Illusionist. Okay. That's one of them. And that is directed by Neil Berger. And then there's another one. There's another magician film that came out along the same time. And this is not the one with twins, but the other one has twins. I'm so sorry. This was a really rambly thing that 
But anyway, there was a, a, I believe, Hollywood movie about twins and, you know, a magician and then the one in the background and whatever, whatever. Okay. Um, they're in Chicago. So it's fun to see, you know, yeah. Lakeshore Drive and the lower Wacker Drive is a great place to set mm-hmm. a chase as established by Blues Brothers. Like, you can't go wrong. Um, the lake is pretty. And at the very end, they're somewhere with a big mountain range with a dam in it. And you're like, you didn't say you left Chicago, but that's okay. mountains. So you're not. Okay. Right. Okay. But oh, you know, a song teleport, a mid movie, you know, an end of film teleport yeah. or whatever. Um, Katrina is there. I don't really remember much about her. She dances well, if I recall. My my one memory of Doom Three that's actually quite vivid is that there's a there's a sign that you see, and I think Katrina's looking at it, or maybe Amir's looking at it, and it says it's like a hand, you know, hand on sign tacked up on a, like a flyer. Sorry. Mm. And it says Asian dancers wanted or Asian cast, Asian mm. actors wanted or something like that. And and Amir and Katrina are there. Now, in the United States, if you say Asian, people mm-hmm. are going to assume East Asian. They do not right. include, they do not assume South Asian. That is a British right. thing. And that bothered me so much because they were like in Chicago, whatever. I'm just say, just say like. Desi, say South Indian, say right. whatever, or South Asian. I mean, but I was like, that is such a weird, like, I know someone, people involved in this movie have been to the United States and that is not right. a word that we use that way. So like, that's yeah. weird. and does this matter? No, not at all. But that really stuck in my craw for some reason. And I think it's right. because Chicago is almost never in a lot of films, honestly, yeah. but like, it's very rarely in Bollywood movies. So I was, I was like, oh, here it is. And people have been asking me like, oh, my office, we could watch it, the filming from my office, like friends who work downtown and everything. I'm sure yours right. too. Um, and then they bungled a little bit of it, but, but whatever. Um, yeah. And there's a, you know, Amir does some, I, I am fairly patient with Amir Khan. <laughs> okay. I know that's not a popular opinion anymore. I tend to really enjoy him. Um <gasps> Maybe his tap dancing is not the greatest. There's tap dancing at the beginning, oh, um, but you never, you never see tap dancing in Bollywood almost ever. It's very, yeah. very, very rare. Um, it's like, there's that bit in Bill at the, you know, mm. in Voledki um, Hey Kaham, but I think yeah. this other one is basically the only other one I think I've ever seen. Okay. Um, so that's kind of fun, but it's not great and whatever. So you don't, you don't need to see it, but if you're feeling homesick for Chicago, you could watch it with one eye reading your, your, yeah. you know, Instagram or whatever. So it is a movie that exists. I think there's a reason there haven't been any more. Right. <laughs> right. Like that it kind of petered out and, you know, it was quite a few years after tomb two, whereas the first two were only two years apart. And I think, you know, yeah. Just... I had two Doom 3 anecdotes, even though I never saw yes. it. So, um, because it was being shot in Chicago. And I had a friend that used to live um, uh, very, like, he lived very close to Wacker. And um, he is, like, born The Prestige. In- That's the name oh, of the other film. Okay. The Prestige. Sorry. So, this friend um, was born and raised in America, like, in Louisiana or something. But he's Desi. Like, his parents are from Rajasthan. And so, he does not watch Bollywood movies. He has zero interest in Bollywood movies. And so, one time, um, his wife was like, oh, do you know they're sh- shooting a Bollywood movie, like, really close to our apartment and everything? And I was like, what? Which one? I had no idea they were shooting the three. But she was like, yeah. And then our friend got really mad and he ranted for 10 minutes about how he's annoyed about all all the Desi people that are hanging around and making it hard for him to enter his building because they're like hanging around hoping to look at the stars. And I was like, but like, I would totally do that if Similarly, there were stars I, would I was too. interested in. Yeah, of course. I would <laughs> I do it even like, if stars I wasn't interested in. It's fun to see stuff happening. Sure. Yeah. So he was all grumpy about it. So that was really mm-hmm. funny. Was he grumpy and- camel? He was being Grumpy Camel, yes. He was also being Grumpy Abhishek uh, and Scowly. He was being Scowl Bay. And then um, the other fun thing that happened was, so my friend and I, um, we had, uh, so my husband and me and my friend and her husband were going to do this like double date. And we had lunch somewhere um, in Chicago. And we had lunch. It was great. And then we're walking back to our cars, which are in opposite directions, right? So we get to our car and then my friend texted me. And just as I got into the car and my husband started driving off, she, I got a text from her saying, oh my God, you're not going to believe whom I just walked past. And I was like, whom? And then she was like, Ishwara Rai. And I was like, what? How did you, what? What do you mean? Why would you, what? 
I was so confused. And then I immediately called her and I was like, what do you mean you passed by Ashwarya Rai? Like, is this a joke? And she was like, no, seriously, she was walking hand in hand with Abhishek Bachchan. So I guess Ashwarya was Aww. in town because of Abhishek shooting. Yeah. I have zero interest in Abhishek Bachchan or Amir or Katrina, but she said Ashwarya and I was like, oh. and then I said to my husband, can we turn around and go near where Karina's car is? Because I want to see Ashwarya Rai. And I was, was like, we are absolutely not doing that because we're going to get stuck in rush hour traffic. So we're going to go straight home. And I was very grumpy about it so that made me grumpy gamble yeah. so when i discovered that ashwara was in town because of abhishek shooting that was the highlight of it but no one i know actually saw her except for my friend who briefly smiled at ashwara and ashwara smiled at her and they just went past i was oh. like didn't you stop her for her autograph or a selfie and my uh, friend was like no i'm not gonna do that i was like ah these people Jackie Shroff is in Doom 3, which I do not remember, but I think now oh. that I see that, I feel like I can guess what he did. But what do you yeah. think he did? Was he a chore? And I think he's like the the magician trainer of Amir's characters and probably probably their oh. their, you know, kind of patron and, and teacher in the arts of theft. I would assume. So yes, a chore, I would assume. <laughs> the art of theft. There's um I saw a song clip from Doom 3 once, which totally turned me off the idea of watching the movie. It was, I think it was Amir Khan wearing some sort of like black vest. And he was wearing these black leather pants that were hitched up really high, like alarmingly high. And I think he was wearing a top hat, if I'm not mistaken, and he was shirtless. Was it the bowler? Was it a bowler hat? That's what he wears. Yes. A lot. Yeah. And I was like, why is everyone always shirtless in the Doom movies? Now, I'm not, I'm a hypocrite, so I'm not complaining about Reddick Roshan being shirtless, I'm all for that. But I don't understand why the Doom franchise is so allergic to shirts. Like, what what agenda do they have against men wearing shirts? Um, I mean, they're pretty equal opportunity skin showing. Yes, well, at least true. somewhat, somewhat. I mean, the women are not wearing much clothing at all, at least no. much of the time. So no, oh. and they're they're also all oily. Everyone in this movie is very oily. There's a very heavy and liberal usage of oil, body oil, as well as bronzer. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching Doom Two on TV, and my husband walked past, and he's like eating his noodles or something, and he's like, "Why is Ashwarya so brownish orange in this?" And I was like, "She's not brownish orange. She is bronze." And he's like, oh, "Okay," and he just like left. I was like, "This is true. This is the most artificially bronzed I've seen her." Um, but yeah, uh, she's she was very Suneri, as she pointed out. Didn't she say she was like golden or something? I think so. Yeah, yeah she would. Pretty cringe. Oh dear. Okay. Well, do you have any lasting thoughts about this great cinematic trilogy, Beth? I think my lasting thoughts are: I'm glad there is films out there for all sorts of people to enjoy. And even though this one is these these films are not for me specifically, that's that's just part of the great wonder that is Masala in particular. So. <laughs> If you enjoy, I, I would love to know more about why why people like these, particularly if you've rewatched them. Like, you know, initial is kind of different than re, than rewatch sometimes. So that would be kind of interesting to me. Yeah. And have you ever seen Abhishek Bachchan be more annoying than he is in this film? <laughs> He's actually not annoying in that Suresh Bajata film in which both Ritik no. and Karina have achieved fine. high levels of nice. He's actually okay in that movie. Yeah, he's fine. It's those two and the animated yeah. parrot yeah. and whatever that are annoying. So yeah, this this may be Abhishek's worst um, pers- personality that I've seen. On and I don't screen. know if it's worst role or worst direction or worst performance or all of the above, but I just, I I am a fan. I would like, obviously this has not hurt his career. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> other things, other things maybe hurt his career or he just decided he didn't want to. I don't know. But this, this is probably not a problem in his career, but filmography particularly, but I, uh, oh boy, these were a lot to sit through in a way. <laughs> Do you are you very grateful for the wonder that is your friend and podcast host who forced you to watch these movies, by the way? It's I mean, I as I've said, I like having homework for these things. Like it's interesting yeah. because I would never just probably I probably would never just rewatch these, right? Unless someone said, like, <laughs> hey, I found out about this Indian Fast and the Furious. Can you tell me about it? Right. Do you have it? Like I'd go over and log in and they could watch it on Einthusen with me or whatever. But um yeah, I don't, I don't, even things that I don't like, it's usually there's something worth rewatching and, you know, they yeah. were, and if, if what I got out of this was a slight, was a moderate redemption arc for Uday Chopra, then that's, that's 
it may not be worth having in the grand scheme of all actors everywhere, but it's a good mental exercise to be like, you can change your mind. You can see something and appreciate it yeah. afresh and whatever. And so that's a good life skill. So, and also just because someone is not like the best at their job or their profession in general, doesn't mean that sometimes they can't pull a rabbit out of their hat and that's actually right. turn in like a really fun and good performance. That's like right. even Uday Chopra is capable of doing really good work. I really enjoyed him in Doom um, 1 and 2. And so mm -hmm. maybe if he had just continued down that path of mm -hmm. kind of like comedic sidekick, right. um, I think he could potentially have made like a career out of that. Uh, but no, he wanted to be a Shah Rukh. Um, yeah. So there's that. It's never going to happen. Um, okay, well, I think uh, you uh, we forgot to discuss what ice cream flavor we think Doom is. I'm going to go with strawberry. Oh. Um, <laughs> what's a flavor that is both bronze and oily? <laughs> oh, God. Salted caramel? Yeah. It's syrupy and it's bronzy. Yeah. Maybe a caramel ice cream with a ripple yeah. of something, you know, like that very fake or caramel that's kind of oily or something like yeah. there's too much cornstarch in it. So it's a little bit or corn, <laughs> corn syrup in it. It's a little slimy or something. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe liberal use of body oil. Maybe Gosh, if we are going to have to assign ice cream flavors to movies, we're going to be out of ice cream flavors fast, but we are going to be out of ice cream flavors fast. Um, okay. I think that um, sums up our doom, 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 doom discussion. Um, also, I have to say that my uh, my TV was driving me crazy because I have the voice command thing set up. And so I said, watch doom. And he showed me a movie called doom. And then I said, no, not doom. And then I, I said, watch doom. And then it tried to show me boom. Which I Kainet. would love to see because it's infamously terrible. So I would yeah. love to see Boom, actually. Kaisa Gustad, I think, made it, right? And it's Katrina Kev's first movie ever. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, do you want to watch Doom? No. Do you want to watch Boom? No. I was like, I want to watch Doom. What is your problem? Um, but maybe that was a sign that I shouldn't have seen it. But anyway, I watched it. Um, so... Thank you for watching this episode of Filmy Ladies. Let us know what you think of the Doom franchise. Um, let us know what your thoughts are on road safety. And also, justice for Bapasha. If you agree with me, mm. let me know. Um, thank you. Bye.